Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, we're going to talk about micro cheating and the dismissive avoidance. So we're basically going to cover a little bit about what micro cheating is. I have a much longer form video about this if you would like to do a deep dive into it. But we're going to really cover how the dismissive avoidant feels if they are the ones enacting the micro cheating and how the dismissive avoidant feels if they're the ones on the receiving end of the micro cheating. So really interesting topic. Um, this is something that I think affects so many different individuals, so many different couples over time. And there are some pretty easy things we can do to just not have to deal with this in a negative way, by being proactive about the types of conversations we're having, the types of boundaries we're setting. Um, so we're going to cover that and, and some things you can actually do about this dynamic at the end of the, the video as well. Now, if you have any other questions about micro cheating whatsoever, um, please feel free at any point to ask them in the chat below. And I can always add more to this and make more of a series. It's definitely a huge topic um, and definitely something that I feel, you know, I see lots of questions about. I feel affects tons of people from the history of working with couples in, in relationships and private practice. Um, and um, if you want to do a deeper dive into trust and actually like rebuilding trust in your relationship, a really great course that you can check out for free at PDS is the course called Rebuilding Trust and Overcoming Jealousy. And it can really help us to like reprogram our personal internal relationship to some of this stuff happening, to not feel so suspicious, not feel so on guard, but also take the appropriate steps needed in relationships to set a boundary, um, to communicate about things that are not okay with us and, and to really get clear on what's healthy and not healthy um, and to reprogram our own internal trust baseline as well. If we have past wounds there to actually get rid of them once and for all. Um, so again, you can try that up by clicking the link below and um it will give you access to that course for free for seven days you can download the workbook go through everything um so we'll talk about this so so what is micro cheating well my favorite definition i found of micro cheating was from alicia munoz and it is micro cheating is the act of cultivating in small ways and appropriate intimate connections outside of your relationship and a lot of people will say like is this cheating or not cheating and i've had many people ask me that over the years in relationships and and just some examples could be like texting somebody in a flirtatious way, um, being overly touchy-feely with somebody on a regular basis at work, even things like sharing feelings with somebody that you have while in a relationship. So obviously like micro-cheating itself sort of exists along a continuum. But what I found is that the most important thing to be aware of in terms of micro-cheating is each individual's relationship to what's taking place. Because we could see, for example, dismissive avoidant see their partner being flirtatious with somebody else and they might be like oh it's not a big deal because maybe for the dismissive avoidant it takes them a longer time to cultivate feelings for somebody um though that's not always the case it's often the case um and you know we may see somebody who's anxious preoccupied who you know gets feelings very easily for somebody else feel really hurt by that action so it's, it's both people's relationship to it number one the person's relationship to it on the um on the end of like initiating the micro cheating and then also the person's experience on the receiving end of it right and we can't really classify if something is cheating or not cheating unless we've had conversations proactively about this stuff first and that's when we have those boundaries those are the commitments that are being broken or not and that's really what what moves the needle towards cheating or away from it so um, it's really important, first and foremost, to see that, yes, micro cheating will absolutely affect relationships, especially long term, especially if there's like consistent, pervasive habits and behaviors of this in a relationship. Um, but we can see really unique things in terms of why this happens. And this is why I really wanted to split this into different attachment styles. Let's use the analogy of an anxious preoccupied who does something in a micro cheating way to get their dismissive avoidant partner's attention because they are looking for validation and they don't feel like they're receiving it in a relationship. And like, let's be really clear here. I'm not here to like say that that's, we're not here to talk about those things. Obviously that's not a healthy way of getting a need met, but you know, that's not saying that what the person's doing is appropriate, but you can see the difference in, a, in why someone's doing it and how that affects the partner in a relationship, right? Like that person's doing it to get closer to their partner. The strategy is unhealthy, but the relationship the person has to it is very different than let's say, for example, somebody who isn't fulfilled in their relationship. And so they're going outside of their relationship to get their needs met. And then they're actively hiding that from their partner, right? So you have a very unique, um, different potential set of experiences here. 
So when it comes to dismissive avoidance in general, um, dismissive avoidance can be quick to infatuate. They can definitely like have strong sort of infatuation feelings, but they have this part of them that tends to be very realistic. And I would say they have a tendency as well to know the difference between like attraction and infatuation versus actually developing feelings for somebody. And dismissive avoidance as a general rule, though it's not always the case, are slower to get feelings and slower to act on them. And it's because they keep their cards close to their chest. They're not really investing and in opening themselves up, which is obviously somewhat of a prerequisite to really develop a lot of those feelings. And so they will often in the relationship to micro cheating assume, because we tend to all project from our perception and, and think other people are as we are, um, they will often think that their actions are a little bit more harmless um, that, that they're taking place. So if they're flirting with somebody, if they're, you know, um, texting a little bit or something like that, they have a, a different relationship a lot of the time where they'll sort of compartmentalize it and be like, oh, well, I don't actually have feelings for this person. And it wasn't coming from a place of trying to invest in that relationship and get feelings and hurt my relationship currently or to actually cheat on this person currently that I'm in a relationship with. This is a terminology, not from me, um, but from dismissive avoidance I've heard over the years working with many different couples when these things have arisen. Um, and so that relationship to it sometimes can be a little bit skewing, right? It can make it confusing for, for the person on the other end. And oftentimes, even if somebody, you know, is crossing a line that that's there, um, you know, the, the person on the other end is really going to be the receiving individual, right? Like it's like, if, if the DA can say, oh, it was not going to mean anything or it was silly, it wasn't a big deal, but you know, it's, it's going to be more about how the person who's on the receiving end receives it. Does it hit core wounds for that person? Does it make them feel not good enough? Does it ruin trust in the relationship? And sometimes we'll see dismissive avoidance feel like I should be trusted and have a hard time actually empathizing with their partner if there is some kind of micro cheating that goes on and the partner finds out. Obviously it tends to be harder if the person finds out and they weren't aware of it, that there, there wasn't a discussion about it to begin with. Um, and sometimes the DA, because they get so invested in this idea of I should be trusted, they can struggle to empathize with what the person's feeling on the recipient end. And this is where it gets really challenging for a couple to actually move through it because one of the most important things to actually move through these circumstances and get over them and resolve them is to create clear boundaries um, to validate the other person who's on the receiving end's perspective and emotions and how it made them feel. Um, and then to be really clear about what your boundaries and, and your sort of non-negotiables are going forward. And then to have the trust rebuilt by, you know, continuing to show up for those boundaries on a long-term basis. So, you know, this is really, really important and an important side note for DAs to dive into. Now, the person on the other end, um, so let's say you're the DA and you're receiving the micro cheating, you're on the other end of it sometimes you guys will be less quick to anger and less quick to take things so hard because again, we tend to project from our perception. We think things, you know, are, are going to be for somebody else the way they might be for us. And so often a DA won't really get too worked up about this sort of thing in advance, but where they will feel um, worked up is if this is a pervasive thing, um, if they see this on a regular basis and they're not going to be usually quick to anger. They're usually more withdrawing over time internally. And you may not recognize it on the outside, but it does definitely push a DA away over time. I've had a lot of conversations with dismissive avoidance over the years um, in my practice and seen a lot of the insides of different people's lives who are dismissive avoidant. And they'll say things like, you know, I don't understand why my partner does this, but over time, I just, I stop caring. Like I just start withdrawing and it's harmful to a relationship when that's happening, especially because it's not getting the opportunity to be really worked on or worked through. Um, and another thing that we'll see is if there's a hidden, um, dynamic, right. If, if somebody's, you know, talking to an ex frequently, if somebody's, you know, reaching out in a flirtatious way, sending pictures, whatever it might be. And, it's, there's an emotional component there um, that can really hurt a dismissive avoidant as well when it's like hidden, right? It's, it's a different, and think of the difference too, right? As an analogy between somebody saying, oh, you know, I've been, you know, I've become really good friends with my coworker in the workplace and, 
you know, I just want you to know that we chat a lot and, you know, we, we have a nice relationship and at one time, you know, would love for you to meet them. And maybe there's a bit of flirtation in the relationship, but it's all transparent. It's all in the open, the dismissal avoidance included. And then think about the difference between, you know, something like that happening and then somebody just not expressing it, not sharing it, not putting it above board at all. It obviously will be more wounding to the trust dynamic in a relationship. So there's so much more we can say about this. Um, this obviously is very much related to trust at the end of the day and different individuals with trust wounds will, will take to this a lot more in, in a difficult way. I have a lot more time actually getting over these sorts of things and resolving them. Um, boundaries, transparency, conversations out in the open are key. Validating one another's emotions. Um, if something like this does happen is really important as well, especially obviously the person on the receiving end to see from their perspective what it would feel like and how it can feel like a threat to the bond or the relationship. Um, so really important to do that work. And again, if you want to do a much deeper dive into trust in general and really have some healthy tools to help facilitate conversations, to rebuild trust, to let go of those feelings of distrust in your life and relationships in general. Um, you can check out the course in the link in the description box below. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.